one thing that I see that's very unique in you that I don't see in anybody else and they're placing your characters in shadows and the environment in general. Can you explain where this came from? Well, I think that, that that's probably um, that's probably just me. <laughs> it's just uh, that's probably my personality coming out. You know, it's uh, um, one minute it's uh, you know bright, the next minute it's dark. <laughs> so um, you know, I think that's probably a blend. I, I think that's if your if your personality is not in your art, then really, you know, who are you? I mean, what are you? I mean, uh, I think that's. Um, that's probably the thing. But as I say, I'm, I'm, I was a student of people who, um, who used light and atmosphere. I mean, my, in, in painting, my, my favourite painter is, is Turner. And then people like, uh, and then I would say uh, Rembrandt. And then after that, I would say John Everett Millay. So, you know, they were very influential on me. And, um, and people like Steve Ditko were masters of, uh, of, of, of shade, light and shade, and, uh, and, and uh, atmosphere. Um, and this, and you know, people like Tony Weir, Tony Weir specifically, who I just mentioned, used to draw with shadow. Um, he, he actually didn't use contour lines like a lot of uh, traditionally used in, uh, in, in strips. He, he painted, with, he, he drew with light and shadow. So that again is an influence. But I think, you know, I, it is part of my personality that I do that. And uh, it's good really, that, yeah. that that is because it's, you know, you need a brand in this business. Uh, you know, people need to, to know what you do and do successfully because that's your, uh, that's your, uh, your continuing career. Modern day sequential artists have a lot of instruction material now in comparison to the past generation of artists. There are manuals on how to draw, what inks to use, uh, monthly magazines in instruction. And I was going through some of your work, some of it not on display here. And I came across a piece that was done on cartridge paper. And on that cartridge paper, you had used every type of ink, fountain pen, marker, or anything that could mark the page, basically, as well as white out and all sorts of things to render the scene, because this goes against the grain of a lot of material out there. Could you expand on this? Well, I, uh, I like to draw, um, uh, for a start, I think the important thing is that, is that the subject tells you the sort of style you're going to use. That's the first important thing. Um, secondly, you know, how much money the people have got who are paying you to do it, whether it's in colour or in black and white. Um, and then uh, I think uh, over and above that, it's, uh, you don't want to get bored. I mean, I have a really low boredom threshold. So one of the things that, that, that keeps me interested in anything I do is being able to experiment if I, if I have the ability to experiment. Um, and uh, some things I've used uh, fiber tip pens, I've done the whole thing in fiber tip pens and markers um, and uh, corrected mistakes with Tipex and other things I've used Indian ink and uh, pencil. Um, other times I've used crayon and then I've used watercolour. Um, I mean, I will use anything that gives me the effect that I want for that particular job. In fact, I did a, I did a story that was set in Cambodia once and uh, I wanted the sort of style of sort of like Chinese uh, brush drawing. And uh, I couldn't do it myself, but I knew an illustrator in the area who could. And so I asked her if she would contribute some of this work of hers. And so I integrated it into the story um, because I thought it was that it was that kind of flavour that I wanted. So, um, but it depends on the subject. Um, so it's a mix of what's the subject? Is it a comedy, a drama? Is it you know a horror story or is it a spy story or whatever? 
And on top of that, it's uh, a matter of, of you know what's going to interest me, what's going to excite me. Yeah, yeah, can I excite? You know, can, what is going to be the most exciting way for me of doing this? So I'm enjoying it as much as the as the reader. And uh, so it's a mix of those things. But uh, but the paper. I mean, I used to use uh, line and washboard, really heavy line and washboard, which is what I was trained to use. I I trained as a as an artist in an advertising studio. And we used this this board, this line of washboard. And when I started my career, I, I kept using that. But after a while, I figured that I didn't really need it um, because the important thing was not was not the um, the artwork itself. It's how it reproduced, and that's that's at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Um, so I could get the same effects from uh, just simple cartridge paper or heavyweight cartridge paper if I'm doing watercolor. I'll have a heavyweight cartridge paper um, with a rough surface, or if I'm doing something that's just black and white and needs a clean line, I'll use something that's a smooth surface, but cartridge paper. But I don't need any more, um, as long as it will take whatever tools I want to use, like crayon or something, if I want to use crayon. Um, so it's as simple as that, really.